Okay, so it looks like AMD actually cooked up a decent generation of graphics cards, and they didn't completely screw up this launch. Overall, the reception and feedback I've seen, not just from reviewers, but from the PC gaming and hardware community, has been quite positive. And honestly, it seems like it's such a welcome change, because for the most part, all of NVIDIA's launches, they were just met with so much negativity surrounding them. But uh, let's get into this discussion surrounding AMD's RX 9070 series and talk about why this might be your go-to option if you're in the market for upgrading your GPU or perhaps building a new system. Let's get into it. This video is brought to you by MSI and their MAG X870E Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard. If you're building a high-end AMD gaming PC in 2025, you need a motherboard that can keep up with the latest hardware. And that's where MSI's MAG X870E Tomahawk Wi-Fi comes in. It takes everything great about the standard MAG X870 Tomahawk and cranks it up a notch. You're getting a premium blacked out 8-layer PCB with reinforced PCIe and DDR5 slots, extended heat sinks for better VRM cooling, and an overall design that screams durability. But what really sets the MAG X870E Tomahawk apart is its support for full PCIe 5.0 support across both the primary GPU and M.2 storage slots. Unlike the standard X870, the E variant ensures you're getting next-gen speeds for both your graphics card and storage without compromise. It's also packed with high-end features like dual USB 4 40 gig ports, Wi-Fi 7 for ultra-fast networking, 5G LAN for wired reliability, and support for up to 256 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM with AMD Expo profiles for easy overclocking up to 8400 Mega transfers. Plus, MSI's Core Boost and 14 plus 2 plus 1 80 amp power phase design ensures rock solid stability even for the most demanding Ryzen CPUs. It's also got great quality of life features like its Easy Connector, offering a wide variety of compatibility with RGB lighting, Easy PCIe release, and Easy M.2 clips, which, as the name implies, makes GPUs and M.2 SSDs a breeze to install or remove. Troubleshooting is also a breeze with MSI's Easy Debug LED, helping you to quickly diagnose any system at a glance. Bottom line, whether you're gaming, streaming, or pushing your Ryzen 9000 CPU to the max, the MSI MAG X870E Tomahawk Wi-Fi is ready. Check it out using the link in the description below. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. AMD's long-awaited RX 9070 series based on their latest RDNA 4 architecture has finally dropped and depending on when or where you're watching this from, you may have already seen the cards hit store shelves. Reviews came out yesterday and the overall reception has been quite good. So I wanted to talk to you guys about that and, you know, give you guys my thoughts on what I think and if these cards are worth buying if you're looking to upgrade to a new GPU or perhaps if you're building a new system entirely. Now, before we get into the whole meat and potatoes here, I did want to preface this video with a couple of things. My discussion is mainly going to be centered around the RX 9070 XT. I believe that the RX 9070 is a GPU that's going to be a very tough sell, perhaps borderline DOA. And, you know, it's uh, clearly an upsell tactic. It's a shame that AMD did that again because we saw that with the 7900 XT and the 7700 XT, it did not work out well for them. And those cards were then discounted to, you know, where they should have launched at a few months later. Because in terms of relative performance, according to Tech Power Up's review, it's only about 5% faster than an RTX 5070 while offering inferior ray tracing and upscaling. We're going to get into that. It seems to be a leap. But regardless, we know that when there is a comparable Radeon product that's uh, in the market for the same price, even if it's like $100 cheaper and offers more VRAM, the NVIDIA card is just going to sell a lot more. That's just the nature or the behavior of the GPU market. So in my opinion, if AMD wanted to make this card not look as bad, then it really should have been $450 max. Also, speaking of pricing, while everyone is getting excited and saying that, you know, this is going to totally demolish the RTX 5070 series, I don't think it's going to be as straightforward everywhere. Now, as I'm making this video, the cards aren't out and, you know, pricing information from retailers hasn't been released yet either. So they're showing prices, but I'm not sure if they're uh, placeholder pricing or if they're the actual real deal, because there were many models that were showing close to direct conversion, which is, you know, great or a slight markup but still considerably cheaper than an RTX 5070 Ti, like, you know, $200 cheaper, if not even more than that. And that's a really good thing. Uh, but then I saw some models that were the same price as an RTX 5070 Ti. And um, in some instances, they were almost as expensive as an RTX 5080. So that doesn't make much sense to me. So pricing at this time of making this video is kind of all over the place. If most models are going to be like, you know, $200 cheaper than NVIDIA's RTX 5070 Ti, then I think that the 9070 XT has a better chance of, you know, making a dent into the market. But even in the States, like if these cards are just going to have the same issue where they're going to be heavily marked up over MSRP, 
uh, then it's just going to tarnish that strong value argument I've been seeing many people use. On the flip side though, stock levels from what I'm hearing are very good globally. Even here in Canada, most retailers I've talked to said that they've had a decent number of cards to the point where they're confident if you walk in a few days later, you'll still see the cards sitting on store shelves or readily available to buy. Although we do have to wait and see what the demand is like for Radeon. Um, you know, but I'm going to be optimistic that if you're someone who is genuinely interested in buying an RX 9070 XT, it really shouldn't be that difficult to attain, not nearly as difficult as, as it has been for the RTX 50 series. Uh, but moving on, let's dive into the whole performance aspect of the RX 9070 XT. And as always, I urge you guys to check out as many benchmarks as possible from various reviewers due to, you know, different testing methodologies, uh, games that are being used, test setups, so you guys can get sort of like an aggregate of the performance numbers. And, you know, I'm going to be trying my best to get uh, my hands on an RX 9070 XT as well, so I can bring you guys my own test numbers and own benchmarks in the format that I prefer. So taking a look at Tech Power Up's numbers first, and they have used the Sapphire Nitro Plus, which is one of the more higher end premium AIB models with a factory overclock. And from what I saw, their numbers were amongst the best in terms of putting the RX 9070 XT in a good spotlight. In their Alan Wake 2 results, which is typically an NVIDIA favorite title, we see chart topping performance trading blows with the much more expensive RTX 5080. A very, very good start. And this strong performance was also showcased in games like Assassin's Creed Mirage and Horizon Forbidden West. But it's not all rainbows and sunshine because uh, there are games out there where it does fall behind the NVIDIA counterpart. Like in Dragon Age The Vilgard, the 5070 Ti is like 12% faster. And in Counter-Strike 2, it showed some very poor performance relative to all the other GPUs where it should be competing. But I feel like this might be uh, something that they can alleviate with a driver update because it does just doesn't seem like a normal uh, benchmark result. Um, but this was also shown by Hardware Unboxed in their review, so I think it's definitely a driver issue. But even Hardware Unboxed showed the same story in their review. In some titles like Warhammer Space Marine 2, uh, we see that the 9070 XT is far ahead of the 5070 Ti. But in contrast, you have games like Dying Light 2 where the 9070 90 XT loses. Um, but shifting over to a website like Computerbase, and we see results that again, also share a similar story. So in a game like Ghost of Tsushima, you can see it leading the 5070 Ti, whereas in a game like Indiana Jones, The Great Circle, we see it lose by a considerable margin. So, you know, there is going to be uh, pros and cons to both sides. But overall, in terms of raster performance, the 9070 XT overall looks competitive against NVIDIA, uh, where there's titles where it's going to be winning by a decent margin, and then it's going to be losing. But for the most part, it's pretty close. Tech Power Up and their average uh, relative performance chart showed a 4% difference, a hardware unboxed and computer base both showed a 6% difference. So I guess you can say, you know, 5% difference if you want to be on the safe side uh, between the 9070 XT and RTX 5070 Ti, which is, you know, measurable. But in reality, that's really a, a basically a wash. You're not really going to be noticing a 5% difference between the two. However, what you will notice is a larger deduction from your bank account. And again, that's where the 9070 XT can potentially make a very, very strong argument for itself. Like if you can readily find AIB models that are at MSRP or very close to MSRP, while most of the NVIDIA RTX 5070 Ti models are going for like a $1,000 um, and are also hard, very hard to find at that, then this is going to tip the skills in AMD's favor. But of course, we got to talk about ray tracing performance, and this makes a strong argument as to why I always tell you guys to watch or read multiple reviews. Because if you guys saw Hardware Unboxed's numbers, then you would have been left quite underwhelmed. As comparing the 5070 Ti to the 9070 XT in ray tracing, so Blackwell versus RDNA 4, it shows that NVIDIA is still far ahead. And Steve found a 25% margin in his review. But compared to RDNA 3, it shows that the AMD card has uh, drastically improved ray tracing performance as you have a chip with 64 compute units outperforming an RDNA 3 GPU with 96 compute units by a significant margin. But Tech Power Up in their review actually showed better performance overall when it comes to ray tracing. Like in their Alan Wake 2 ray tracing result, the 9070 XT is on par with the 5070 Ti. Now, again, this isn't a knock on anyone's review but it again highlights why you should look at as many reviews as possible because they could have tested with different settings, different levels, etc. And that's why I will, you know, gonna, you know, trying to get my hands on one of these Radeon GPUs for myself so I can test this for my uh for my own self and come up with my own conclusion based on my own benchmark suite. But 
judging from the results, unfortunately, the consensus around ray tracing doesn't really change. And that is, if you're a fan of that kind of eye candy, then you might want to consider going NVIDIA. But again, it depends on pricing. Like for me personally, if I wasn't doing production work on my PC, I'd probably be leaning towards the Radeon GPU, as I don't see it being worthwhile to pay another two to three hundred dollars for ray tracing. Again, we're talking about street prices here, not MSRP, which is why I'm hoping there will be plenty of AMD options close to MSRP. We'll find out as this video goes live, but as at the time of making this video and recording, I just don't know what the pricing is going to be like. And that's not me saying that. It looks like over on the BAPC Canada subreddit, there's people expressing that at these prices that were leaked or had been shown from retailers prematurely, the difference between the 9070 XT models versus the 5070 Ti's isn't that large. So they're like, at that point, I'll buy the NVIDIA GPU or wait for it to come back in stock. You know, so the argument still stands as it did for previous generations, where if you're mainly interested in raster performance, then get AMD. But if you care about ray tracing, upscaling along with softer features, uh, stuff like NVIDIA Broadcast, Reflex 2, CUDA, etc., then you'll find it worthwhile to pay the difference for the NVIDIA card. Um, but speaking of software, though, Digital Foundry did a pretty nice job at showing the improvement of FSR 4. And I'll have a link to their video in the description. Definitely recommend checking out. And it really highlights the amount of work AMD has put in in terms of improving their upscaling algorithm. From the examples that I was seeing, it seems like it might be on par with NVIDIA's DLSS 3 for the most part, which, you know, isn't a bad thing. I was already quite impressed with NVIDIA's DLSS 3. I was using it often in some games that I was playing, but in some instances, I saw it even give NVIDIA's impressive DLSS 4 transformer model a run for its money. So in terms of upscaling now, I would say that if you have access to DLSS 4 or FSR 4, doesn't really matter. You're going to get a good image upscaling experience either way. So, you know, ben and you get the benefits of higher performance due to the internal resolution being lower so that's great i know a lot of people care about upscaling more than more so than they do for ray tracing performance um, the problem comes uh, from AMD still needing to address adoptability or how much wide adoption there is going to be in terms of games. Now, of course, this is easier said than done, right? Considering the sizes of them versus NVIDIA and their market share. But this will be one of the major contributors to AMD's plan on growing market share and their success. Um, you have new major titles that are coming out and, you know, they're always plastered with NVIDIA features. DLSS 4 marketing was everywhere when the RTX 50 series was being rolled out. And AMD just needs to get on that same level as that is what's going to create that strong presence in the minds of gamers. Circling back to the pricing though, it's all going to come down to that. We know that what the MSRP of these cards is, but we also know that MSRP is total bullshit. Um, it's just not reality. If the cards are priced closely, then awesome. If they're going to be getting the same markups as Nvidia, then unfortunately that's just not going to move the needle for them. But yeah, we're going to have to wait and see. I really, really hope that finding MSRP cards is going to be very doable for everyone. But that's going to be wrapping it up for this one. I'm going to try my hands to get get one of these cards as soon as I can. I just so happen to have a 5070 Ti that I'm doing a whole bunch of testing with and going to be comparing with other GPUs that I have. So stay tuned for that video. Um, but again, we're going to be touching base in the next video. And uh, for now, that's going to do it for this one. Take care, guys. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.